And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Shakina Rose, angelic messenger songstress, healer, and channel of the Blue Ray, who has had multiple near-death experiences, which we are going to learn about today. Shakina, thank you for joining me and welcome. Thank you for having me. And you have such a lovely picture behind you. I'm assuming that's Sedona. Oh, yeah. This is where I live, uh, is Sedona. And it's a, it's an extraordinary, it's a gorgeous, uh, it's it's gorgeous. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's stunning. In any, any, any place that you drive, this is what you're going to see mm. it, here. It, so, look, it looks so yeah. amazing. It is amazing. Yeah. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed to live here. Shakina, can we start with your first NDE and go from there? Well, my first one, um, I was living in Florida. I was living in uh, South Florida and I was living with my boyfriend at the time. And uh, that evening we had uh, gone out to dinner. We had um, friends uh, come in from California and so we went out to dinner in Miami, but it was a new place that we we had gone. And, but the next day, and this was a day too that um, it was it, it was a Saturday that we went out, and then on Sunday is the day that uh, my boyfriend worked, and he worked in Miami, and it was one of his long days. And um, so, when I got up the next morning. I was feeling, I was starting to feel, you know, kind of sick. And the thing about it is, is that uh, during that time, that time period, I used to have kind of challenges um, with my menstruation. And um, in general, um, I, I had, I was working at it, trying to, uh, to get better with this. Um, and I was, uh, working in all types of methods, uh, to, uh, to be more healed with that. But for whatever reason, um, I had issues with my menstruation. And so it being on that in general, just made me sick. And it usually took a whole month before I would, I would get well again. So, so it happened to be that time. So that was happening. And at the same time, I was getting sick from when we went out to eat. But I didn't really like really uh, realize how um, serious it was. And so the, the the day progressed, and I just I became more and more sick. And you know, I was in the bathroom a lot. And so I started to get pretty dehydrated. And so what happened is I just eventually, um, and, and it was like hours, it was like hours. And so eventually I just, I was so like, um, feeling so sick and feeling so drained that I just eventually laid on the bed. I was just, I was just exhausted. So I just laid on the bed and I don't know exactly, but at some point it was that, I started to, it was like I started to uh, fade out. I started to go like in and out of my body. Okay. And, and I remember as this was happening, it was interesting. And I was just, and I kept feeling sicker, but I just, I was just, I was just laying there. And I remember at one point, and I don't know how many hours this was, because it could have been like hours that this happened. Hours that like, I was like so sick that I just kind of like, I guess went to sleep in a way or kind of like, uh, sort of like passed out in a way. But it's it was like I was coming in and out of consciousness. And as, as this was happening, I remember I, I looked it it's uh the corner of the room and i could like see i could almost i could feel a presence i could uh i could feel a presence and it was like there was a portal there and i know this sounds interesting but 
because I was going back and forth and <clears throat> going to the, I was going to the light, but I was going to the light and then I was coming back. And, but I noticed that there was this presence there. And this is, this is what I'm going to say. So it was like what they call the angel of death or the, or the angel of transition. There was this presence there. And when there was this presence there, it's, it's somehow, it made me feel like this is, this is normal. Okay. This is, this is natural. This is, this is the process. And this being, um, had this, um, comforting presence and it, it, it was like, it was like, I remembered, I remembered, oh, this, this is natural. Uh, I remembered it from before. And so what happened is because I was so dehydrated that I just started leaving my body and I just, I just went straight to the light. I, I didn't go in any tunnels. It was just, there I am. There I am in the light. And the light and I, the light just spoke to me, but not um, through words. The light spoke to me through um, empathic resonancy. The light spoke to me through, I guess what you what you say, telepath, but it was communion. I was communing, communing with the light. And I remember that I was at the line. There was this line right in front of me was I'm immersed in the light here. Okay. But I'm still on, I'm still on a line. And so I'm, I guess, I guess I'm still between worlds and the light and I, we, we communed and we talked and, but there was a lot that happened as I was in the light because as I'm there in the light, I, I, I know that this is where I'm at, but you know, um, I'm still connected to my body, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not so conscious in my body anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm just conscious with the light now. And so we communed and, and a lot of things happened like really quickly because I, being there, being in this residency, because that's what it was like for me. It was like, you, you remember, okay, I remembered at least. I remembered when I was in the light, I remembered the light and what it was like. All encompassing. Um, everything. And I wanted and it, and it, I wanted to be there because that's my home. And but before I did that, I was really I was it, so fast. I was able to, like in a split second, like uh, um, on multi, almost on multi-dimensional levels. So the light and I, we were we were discussing things, um, all kinds of things that they were telling me, and 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 some really important things uh, about about life. And as I was, I wanted to. I thought I was going to go into the light. I thought I was going to, to go there because I was, I was immersed back 
in who I am again. All accepting, all encompassing, all love, all acceptance. So before, but before I made that this decision, I just I I went through I went through the people. I I went through would anybody would any would I hurt anybody? Would anybody be really hurt by my leaving? And so I went through the peoples. I went through my family. I I but I went through them kind of fastly. And I just kind of experienced each each one kind of came to me that was in my life. And and I felt about it. And I felt I felt that they would all be okay. I felt that they would all be okay if 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 I went into the light. So that happened. And it happened at a really fast kind of multi-dimensional empathic feeling way cuz that was important to me the light um showed me things um the light like showed me about um this this was challenging when i when i came back this was very challenging so the light showed me how it came down as the light. The light came down through like facets, like multi-facets. The light came down through multi-facets to the earth for all the religions. So, but it was pure. So the light had come down through all the establishments of any type of religion or faith or uh, whatever organization that is that is like religion and i saw that and i experienced that and that was very challenging when i came when i came back because i experienced and i saw the pure light of creation that had come down to the planet that's the best way i can describe it right but multifaceted like everything was the pure light of god's of god's creation source the light to me is is like the light to me was is like god the light to me is like creation but it came down and it was pure it was pure source light that came down to the earth. And um, and so we talked a lot. We communed a lot about a lot of things. Um, one of the things that we talked about, the light and I, was kindness and how important kindness was. And we communed a lot about that and what the light told me, because there was a lot that happened in this. And I can't remember everything. In the in the beginning, when I got back, I, I wrote everything down. But I remember one thing what they told me about this. And they told me that kindness is God's love and action. And I've always remembered that. And I've always, you know, understood that how important that is, because that's really, that's really God for me. Like that's really being a Christian. And so, so at some point, like I'm, I'm, I'm going back and forth and I'm going up into the light. Now there's a lot that's happening in the light that I'm not realizing, right? Because it's all encompassing. I didn't realize what was was going on at the time is that as I'm being immersed in this light, I'm being immersed in frequency. I'm being immersed in, okay, what we call here on the planet, I guess you would say, 
the music. As I'm there and I'm communing, I'm also communing and I'm being in the frequency. I I can hear the frequency. I'm in the in the light. I can I can hear the frequency. It's hard to describe it. It's all that is. So I'm being immersed in this frequency, communing with the light. And there was this line, like I said, and I knew, like I just, I knew empathically. I, I, I just, you just know things. Um, they call it, they call it clear, uh, clear audience, a uh, clear cognizance here. Like where you just, you just know things, right? And so I knew things, and I knew that there was a line, and I was at the light, and that if I took, but I still have my body. That's that's right. That's right. My body was, you know, still on the, my, my physical body was still on the earth plane, but I still had a body, but my, they didn't say, we didn't say, but, but I still had a body, a high, I guess a higher body when I was communing with the light. And so my higher body, I guess uh, my higher light body was at the light and because I knew that I was at the line and I knew that if I took one step over one, if I took my leg and I stepped it over across to the light, that that would be it. I, I knew that, that that would be, that I would be gone. And so I did, I, it was my, my right leg and I like I pulled my right leg up because I was gonna it's interesting like I was gonna one step over right I was gonna cross over into the light and then it was like a minuscule second it it, it was like out of time and space because like everything happens so fast as I'm as I'm going to step in there bring up my leg my my knee to cross over because I had spoken with the light, we, we, we spent plenty of time communing, converging. And they told me, they said, it's your decision what you want to do. You, you can decide. But as for whatever reason, as I pulled my uh, knee up and I'm, I'm going over and I'm going to step over something inside of me. Something inside of me said, and it, it it like came from my 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 um uh, my soul, like my my heart space. It it was like, oh no, I I want I want I, I want to sing in the language of light. I, I want to sing, and and it came from like right in my 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 heart soul, right? And I didn't <laughs> I didn't even really know what that fully meant like I didn't even under like understand what that meant but I now I understand that I I had been communing and being immersed in this like the music of the spheres you know there's there's names that we we try to 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 put on what this is this this holy frequency all-encompassing but as soon as I said as soon as I had a reason as soon as I did it, it was it was instant and I just, what I say is I just plummeted. Like it felt like so, like I had, I was so far away, right? And I just plummeted back, bam, like bam in my body. Because that was it. That was the, I didn't know. But that was such a, something so powerful to bring me back to the planet. And now when I came back, when I, cause that's what it felt like. I felt like I just came from so far away and I slammed right back into my body. That did not mean that I was conscious in my body. It just mean that I, I had gotten back and, um, there were some interesting things that had happened on that day. And like I said, now this is, um, 
this is a long day for uh, my boyfriend who I live with. And so he, he, he works late. And he's in Miami, and so we're in West Palm, so I don't know, it's it's like an hour and 40 minutes even to, to go to Miami and back. Well, something had happened, and he had uh, clients, he had two cancellations that day, and that's really an abnormal, like he never had cancellations, because people were always waiting for him. Um, he was a doctor of oriental medicine, and um, an acupuncturist, and so he had he had hap as I had come back into my body, he had, he had come back home <laughs> like hours, hours before he was supposed to. And he, he came back and he found me and I was, you know, li lying there. I was lying there on the bed and, but I couldn't talk. I could not talk. I, I guess the dehydration, how long that I had been out of it. It could have been hours and hours that I was communing with the light. And he just, he looked at me and I guess I, maybe I looked white or something because he just started, um, he just started rubbing my limbs. He just started rubbing my arms. He started rubbing my legs, I guess, to, you know, to help me. He didn't know what was going on, but I guess the way that I looked started to, to, to try to help me to come back and, and it helped. And, um, I eventually, I, but I couldn't, it was so hard to talk. I was so out of it. Um, I eventually was finally able to say something to him, barely. And I, the, what I said to him, I could barely say, I was just like, water. I was just like, water. <laughs> I couldn't explain, I, I couldn't explain to him what had happened. I just, I was just, just like water. So. Shakina, thank you for sharing that experience with us. At the time that it happened, were you spiritual or religious? This is really interesting. It's um, it's very, very challenging. It was very challenging to come back for quite some time. Yes. Or I thought I was... I thought I was spiritual and I was on the spiritual path. But what happened was, and I was, I was a little angry in the beginning because I was on the spiritual path. But what happened is because I had gone to the pure source of light. Everything that I knew connected with spiritually otherwise had completely in a second since when I got shifted everything had changed and it was very challenging and what was interesting was I just got back from the pure source of light everything that I had known everything that I connected with it wasn't right it didn't feel right to me. I mean, even I had shifted so much, I couldn't even, I did, I felt like almost a different person. And what had happened, what was challenging is, well, I became extremely, super ultra sensitive empathic. So for a while, I was so sensitive, I could, it was hard to live. And I think for three months, I locked myself in the bedroom. Um, I would eat in there. I, I was over stimulated, over sensitive. And um, the thing is, too, is that um, <laughs> the man that I was with um, had he he had collected buddhas he had, his parents were uh missionaries and an, an archaeologist and from all over the world so he had from all over the world statues of buddhas and mother mary and he he had pictures of the ascended masters and mother mary and every every place you could imagine i mean you would think that 
this was like we, we were living some kind of temple or something like that. He had the walls all the way up to the ceilings in his office in every place full of ascended masters and, and, and Mother Mary and all these beings and Buddhas everywhere. And that was so challenging to handle because I couldn't handle any of that because I, to me, and this, this is, this is challenge. It was challenging was that I felt like every single depiction of every being, every religious, every ascended master was, was not right, was wrong. I don't want to say wrong, was not pure. And where had it come from? Because at that time, I was just beaming with this, 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 this light. So it was quite challenging. And I would walk around sometimes saying to myself, <laughs> no, if I could admit this or not, but I would, because it was so challenging. I would say, wasn't I spiritual enough? Wasn't I spiritual enough? I had to, because it was so challenging to go through this, um, to go through being instantly changed. I couldn't even connect with almost like my old life. I couldn't connect with my persona, my personality, our, my name. It just, it, did, it didn't resonate with me. Um, and, and plus too, I mean, I wasn't, um, so whatever that was, whatever that um, food poisoning was or whatever that happened to me, it, it like, I was, I, I wasn't fully well either. I had um, digestive issues. I had, I had uh, problems. Um, I couldn't, I was, I, I couldn't keep weight on. I was losing, I was so thin. I I could barely, I, I was like 98 pounds. And there was, there was a lot, Jeff, there was a lot that happened when I came back. For many months, I had to, it was like I had to go through this um, extreme purification. Um. And it was, it was everything. And it was so physical on me. Like I had to, to, to clear and uh, things like 24 seven, clear and clear and clear and transform and clear all this, all these things. And um, it was, it, t it took a, a big toll on my body. And at the time I, I was consuming like so much food. I, I I would make myself consume so much food and I would make myself uh, like the, the whole foods they they would have. Um, we had this uh, uh, dessert bar and I would just get big box full of desserts and just tons of food. And I and I would eat, and I would eat it and I would eat it and. I could not keep any weight on me. It, it just. Yeah, so. And um, yeah, and, but I did seek help too. I did seek help. I've had a few near-death experiencers encounter the angel of death. And what I love is you call it the angel of transition. It wasn't told to me that that was its name. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what I felt that it was. I think it's a great idea because it takes the fear away. It was a beautiful, comforting um, being, and um, I. Th this was so. It was kind of traumatic for me. Um, and this, it was so much. And and like I said, you you know, you asked me, was I spiritual before? Yeah, I was. I was spiritual. I was on the path, and this and that. But this experience, 
was different from anything that I've ever, that I ever had. And it really shook me up. And, um, I, there was a, um, there was a hospital in Pompano in Florida, Pompano beach, this huge hospital. in um, they, I, I had to seek, um, a group. So there was a near death experience group in Pompano and, um, and it was like connected to the hospital actually. So I, I went, I eventually went, I, I, I had to go. Um, I, I just, it was just so much for me that I, I went to, um, a near death experience group. Now this one was very interesting because it was connected to the hospital. It was on the campus. And so there were, there were patients and there were people who would that, and, and uh, thank you, thank you for for having that 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 um, hospital. You know, thank you. Um, but there were people who were patients, and they they had gone down to, into the group. So there were patients. There were also um, people who had just had near death experiences, and so uh, and it was a really large group. So I went to that group and. Um, and there were also a facilitators. There may have been doctors there too. And um, it was comforting me, comforting to me. I couldn't uh, share my experience when I first went there. I, it was just so much for me, but I had listened to some other uh, uh, people share. And one of the things that they did share was that they had also experienced um, the angel of transition. When you were there at the light, you use the words they. Does that imply that God is a collective of beings? I suppose so, because <laughs> that's what came out of my mouth, right? So, okay, that's what it felt like. I did not experience any beings that had crossed over. Any of my, you know, any beings that knew me, there were there were none. At it did feel like, okay, for me at the light, yes, it, it felt like a collective, okay, a collective voice energy. Uh, yes. All right. Well, you've had two more NDEs, so let's move on to the next one. So what's interesting is that Jeff, I just want to share is that I'm, I never, I, I'm not a singer. I never sing before. I never did that. So for, for, for me to sing or to do this toning, that was a lot. That was a lot for me to do because that started to play out once after my first near death experience, I, that's what I started to do. And so the, the, the two others happened when I, when I lived in Sedona. So this was not that long ago. Okay. So it was like in 2000 and um, like 14. And those were different and not different. Okay. I always, I don't know what it is, but I always go to the light. And, um, but they, the two that I had were a bit easier to integrate because of that, because of that, you know, that main first one. And because I, I had spent a lot of time at the light in the first one. So again, I don't know what was going on with me. Okay. But I started getting, um, ill and it looked like it was, um, insulin resistance, hypoglycemia, and it was pretty bad. And I was, I don't know where it came from, but I was, I was pretty sick and it, it, it almost like it just came out of nowhere. I remember hiking. I remember, cause I used, I used to, be a, a major avid hiker. I mean, incredible. I love this land. And I remember going out one time and almost like passing out. And um, so I just started becoming really sick. And um, I even um, 
I even went to um, a clinic up in Flagstaff at the time, and I was I was so sick. So insulin resistance hypoglycemia is like regular hypoglycemia is like a, you get a little uh, jittery or shaky, and then um, if you eat food, you're fine, right? You'll you'll be okay. But this was like I was so depleted, and I was jittery and shaky, but I was so exhausted. I, I, I was like, I barely had energy to, 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 to live. I, I would eat something, right? But it, 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 it wouldn't help. It still wouldn't help. And I, and, and so um, I'd have to do like grape juice or something like that, but it, it's like, you don't have enough um, brain sugar. So you, you, you could go like into a coma it was something like this. And, uh, but, I, but I did, I, I went, I went to the clinic at the time. I was so, I was so sick that I could not even stand to write, to fill out my form. Um, they had to give me a chair. I was so sick. And it's such a strange illness that, that, um, my boyfriend at the time had to walk me to the first, um, uh, place to get my blood drawn. So, cause I was, I, cause I had to, to seek help cause I, I was always not really into the, uh, the doctors or the medical. I was, I almost had a, a, a phobia against that. I've, I've gotten better now. <laughs> um, and so, so one day I was by myself and I, and I had that situation where like, I needed, to, I needed to eat some food. And I was feeling like really sick and I, I, I got some food, but I needed, you need sugar when you're that, when you're that low, you have to have sugar. So you have to have grape juice, like immediately, like to help, to help your body. Cause that's just the way it, it reacts. Cause that's what it seemed like I, like I had, well, I didn't because I got confused you just you just get disorientated because you don't you don't have enough brain power don't have enough life force to think so i went and laid down because it also it makes you really exhausted like so exhausted so fatigued so i just laid down and i laid on the bed and it was like i don't know because okay i was out for a long time because it must have been 12, uh, one ish, because when I came back and I looked at the clock, it could have been like four ish. So I was laying there and I wasn't getting anything right. And my body just couldn't handle it. And I left. And so it's interesting that I was unconscious on this plane. I'm unconscious. Um, and I'm gone sleeping right you're sleeping and you're you're pretty un, unconscious pretty deep when when you have such um low sugar low blood sugar like that and it was hours and I didn't know so I was really really unconscious I was sleeping however at some point I left my body and I go to the light no no I'm going to the light and as soon as that happens, I wake up. I didn't wake up physically here, but I wake up. I wake up like in that realm. Like suddenly I am awake and I know what's happening. And I'm going to the light and I'm leaving and I'm going. But I'm awake. I'm awake to know what's happening now. Of course, my body is still being unconscious. And I knew what was happening. I knew I was leaving. And so I called out. I called out. I called out for this person. This I called out for my boyfriend. I called his name. I called his name. And I I had to, I had to go through like an understanding of like, why, why would I do that? Why didn't I call God? Like, I, I wondered like, why, when I, 
when I finally came back, like, why wouldn't I call God? But every near death experience, you learn something like I learned something. So I called out his name like three, like three times because I'm leaving. I'm going to, I don't have enough. I don't have enough in me. And so this person, my boyfriend at the time, he, he wasn't physically there, but I had called him out in the realm. He, he, he reached out his hand to me. He reached out his hand to me, I guess, more from the earth plane. He reached out his hand to me and I, I, I put my hand in his hand. And then he took, he, he took me and he, he, he grabbed me. He grabbed me back to earth. And when he grabbed me back to earth, I came back in my, I, I, I came back in my body and I, I woke up. When you got to the light, did you realize you were having this experience all over again? I knew I was going to the light. I didn't get that. I didn't get as, I was on the way. I was going. I knew it. And that's why I, I did not, I don't know why I called this person, but I, I, you always learn things. You always, because I had already, There were a couple, there were a couple of things I had already, by then I had already been doing the language of light. I'd already been singing. I'd already been on my path. So however that went is how it went. But there was something else that I wanted to experience. It was interesting. Now, this time I I didn't want to leave because there was some other, there were, there was other things of the earth that I wanted to experience, that I hadn't experienced yet. And so I called out and yes, and I came back. Um, the thing about it is every, every time you come back, you're shifted. And so my field, so your field is for me, my field was so open. So that was also a very challenging time because when I came back, because I was still sick. Now, somehow, Jeff, I don't know. I'm just grateful. Somehow over a couple of years, I got well. I don't know how. But when I came back, I was teeter-tottering um, back and forth. And like the light at the time was so close to me. Like the light was always there and it was always coming in. And during that time, I was like, um, I was in and out of this reality. I was alive, but I was kind of in and out of this reality. And I was having a lot of experiences, like a lot of experiences with, with beings that would show up. Like, and I, I know now with, you know, working with other beings that have near death experiences that in the beginning, like when you come back, you are so open, you have a lot of these experiences. Like I had a lot of, I, I had uh, extraterrestrial beings come to me. I had ascended masters come to me. Um, I was just teeter tottering in and out um, of the light. It's, it really took me a lot to be able to, um, be here, be here on this planet. And, but the interesting thing is that, so, but again, I got connected to, to like the light again. I got connected to the light again. I got connected to that frequency, that vibration of all, of all that is, I say it's the light. Um, but it has, it has, it has frequency. It has vibration. Even at times there was, it was even really beautiful and what you could hear. And because of that, when I came back, that's the second or third uh, time I was told, <laughs> I was, I, I was told sing because before I was doing more, um, a language of, I was doing more toning. Okay. 
But the, it was like the light said, sing now. So the way that I did the language of light totally shifted. Then I started singing. I just, because I got attuned again. And again, that changed my entire life and my expression and my connections on the planet, like I was telling you before, connected me to Tim. So when you sing, are you singing in the light language or in English? Oh, no. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not singing in English. So you can say it's the light language. It's it's the music of the spheres. Um, what was um what was interesting is that after I had come the first time that I had come back from the light, um, I don't know if it was a year later or or how long that um one of my friends was having this big event in California and she wanted me to do my present do my my vocals there, right? And I did. And so um they filmed it and um a scientist, a physicist came along and wanted to analyze my vocals. And this was kind of shortly after um, I had come back from the light the first time. They wanted to analyze what was what I was doing, and they did. And when they did, they came back with all of this information that I sang in all these frequencies, that I sang in... Um, he said, uh, I sing in the six pure tonal notes of creation, the ancient Sofigio scale. And there was like a whole, whole, whole long list. And actually he was, I think he was trying to discredit me or something. And um, I remember I was like, I don't care. I, I just got back from the light. I, 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 I know what I'm here to do. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I do, but I, I almost feel like he he kind of validated me in some way because how could I suddenly do that? How could I sing in all of those frequencies? And that that you that YouTube is on um, that video is on YouTube that he analyzed, and it apparently it has all it all it has all the frequencies in it. What's the name of your YouTube channel? Uh, Sh Shakina, just Shakina Rose, Shakina's Light. If you go to Shakina Rose. Yeah. Do you have a lot of other videos of you singing there? Yes. It's uh it's my service. How did you start channeling the blue ray? That happened to me um in 2008. So I'd always been um like a little different, like um I felt the world like empathically, uh, very sensitive being. Um, but I was always kind of quiet and I, and I had known about like the star seeds and I, I'd known about the indigos and I, I'd known that. Right. But I didn't, I didn't feel like I was one. Like I didn't feel like I was an indigo, like that didn't fit me. And so one day I'm just like walking, um, out in nature and it just, it just came to me and I heard, you're from the Blu-ray. And I'd like, I, I stopped in my tracks and I went, oh. it was like something inside of me resonated with that. And it, and so I agreed as soon as something inside of me said, yes, I'm from the Blu-ray, which I didn't even really know what it meant. Something else happened. And it was like this, a full download just happened. And I'm walking and I said to myself, I know all about the Blu-rays. I know why they're here. I know their mission. I know their purpose. And I'm going to go and I'm going to write it down. And I get back and I'm going to just write it all down. And um, so I did. And um, I, I guess it was a reawakening of this information. So I wrote it down. Why they're here about these Blu-rays, these ultra-sensitive impasse. And I, I put it out to a few friends in the beginning. And then eventually I, I put it to a, a publication. And there were like so many beings that started to resonate with this information, which I had no idea. And now, now, Jeff, I am so 
it's unbelievable to me about the Blu-ray and the amount of uh, um, channels there are of the Blu-ray and websites and um, information and groups on on Facebook about the Blu-ray. Now, I, I've been, so ever since then, I feel like that I want to assist these, these ultra sensitive empath star beings. So um, I have the sensitivity to be able to connect into the consciousness and connect into like what we're going through. So I'll write like uh, the Ascension um, upgrades. I'll, I'll, I'll write about the Ascension um, energies and the Ascension symptoms. And I'll write about this. And I just, I just, I put that out and I've been doing that since um, 2008 to assist them, to assist us. What do you find inspiring about your NDEs? That it, it changed me. It helped me to, I, what I feel like is a higher course a higher path to maybe know more of God, more of the light, um, and to know uh, uh, how precious this life is. It's extraordinary, this life what we have and how we're so meant to be here and how everything, every, everything, all of God, all of life, all of creation, all the relationships, everything is supporting us in being here in our life. A lot of indie ears during their life review learn that small acts of kindness are the most important thing to do down here on earth. And I loved how you said that kindness is God's love in action. Yes. We talked a long time about this because it puts, and it is, uh, Jeff, you're right in what you said, small. Sometimes it's these small things that we do that we're not even aware of, that change everything. And when we do that, when, we, when we're kind, we're in the God flow, and we're allowing God to be in the equation, we really are on this planet. And it small acts of kindness change, changes our lives. Do you feel like you're still processing those NDEs? <laughs> yes. Yes, I still get information. I still get understanding about what it is, um, what happened. Um, absolutely. It takes, it probably will take, this is what I feel, the rest of my lifetime, however long that I'm here, to do that. Um, I mean, even uh, today when I was, feeling about that I'm going to share this with you. And I, I looked at the people that I've connected with because of it, how my life has changed. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for that. I'm, I'm so grateful for what I do. Um, the, the mission or the, the service the work that I do, being able to work with individuals um, and to utilize that, um, what happened, to utilize those, um, those, vo those, 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 those vocals, that music, because it kind of brings it, it brings it here on this planet. And it, it does all kinds of different things. Um, it's connected to me to so many things, so many people you know, because of it. And it's definitely made me a different kind of being. Um, 
uh, a more conscious being. Um, yeah. Um, and how important it is, you know, to be, to be that vehicle, to be, to be, to be kind and loving and how that changes the world. What kind of advice would you give to people who are grieving over the loss of loved ones and or are having their own existential crisis? Um, well, they're there. I mean, they're truly, truly there. Okay. Um, you can um, communicate with them. When you um when you're sharing with them, they hear you. Um, they know you. And I want to say, um, they are listening and they will give you signs that they're still, I want to say, still alive. That they're still alive. Um the thing is is you know it's it's our human it's our human and this is part of being human is this experience and there has to be some time we go through grieving um because we're gonna you know but um but they're there they're they're still alive and 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 be open um they feel everything they feel you they're there and it was important every the relationship that you had everything is still alive everything is still alive it's right here if you can go right here you can still feel them they're there but it was also important Their time is extremely important that, that that they actually got to finish what they came here to do. No matter what it looks like, that's the thing. No matter what it looks like, always on the other side. It isn't divine alignment. No matter how, what accident or whatever. It's do, right. Do you think- And they're not suffering. Shakina, after watching this podcast, people may want to reach out to you and ask you questions. Are you open to that? Yes. What's the best way to reach you? You can reach me through my website. So it's at shakinarose.com. And there's an email there. Um, you can reach me also on my YouTube channel too. A lot of people, we, it's almost like a little community there. And I'm People really comment and connect there as well. And um, I'm on Facebook as well. You have a YouTube channel. You have Facebook. You have your website. Do you have anything else that you're working on that you want us to know about? Um, yeah. There's going to be a um, an online webinar that I'm doing for the New Earth High Frequency. And there's going to be a lot of healing. There's going to be a lot of clearing and balancing and the, the divine language. And I'm doing that also with uh, Kalina Amelnar. And I haven't really done any webinars. Um, I usually do one-on-one. -on -one. And um, so this is um, a beautiful opportunity if you want to experience um, some of this, you know, some of this, you know, work, some of this, this language. Um and um, that's going to be that's on my that's on my website. That's going to be a May uh, May twenty first at eleven o'clock. And um, and then I will be doing um, the Sisters of the Sacred Rose, the event uh, that I usually do um, in July here in Sedona, and you know, an actual live event. What brought you to Sedona in the first place? <laughs> I was called. I was called to uh, come to Sedona and Sedona is really interesting in that way. Like if you come and you live here and you um, be with the people, there are like books written about how we get this calling to come to Sedona, how strong it is, how powerful these vortexes are, how powerful this, the extraordinary energy is. And 
that's what happened. I knew I was going to come back to Arizona at some point, but I spent 10 years in Florida and there was a time when she, and I hadn't like checked out Sedona per se, exactly how it was, but there was a point when she called me and she said, mother earth guy, called me. said, she said, it's, it's time. It's time to come back to, and to go to Sedona. And then it happened to be that a place opened up for me. Someone that I had been working with said, you know, if you ever have, if you ever need a place, you know, to stay, if you go out there for a while, I have one. And this person kept telling me this. So everything just kind of like lined up. And so, and so it drew me and, um, but I didn't know, I didn't know a soul here. Uh, I didn't know the streets or anything like that. And I was drawn to come here like many people are, have this, this calling, this, this power to be here in these vortexes, in this land. Shakina, before we finish up, can you leave us with one last positive message? You're meant to be here. And life is serving you. All of God, all of life, all of creation, all the situations, it's truly serving you. And you're so meant to be here. And you're so meant to express who you truly are. And that really, really matters. Because when you are expressing who you are, it's like you're bringing in that God source and you're more able to experience, you know, all of God and, and, and creation reaching out to you. Um, and of course, love, because love is kindness. Um, yes, it's more important. It's always more important to be kind because when you when you go to the other side it's the most important all of those things are the most important things you do not care about how much more things that you didn't get okay that you didn't like buy or you didn't get but you care you feel deeply about how you treated others in your relationships and what you did and what you didn't do and what you could have done. That is the most important thing. And it is powerful and it shifts. It shifts life. Shakina, thank you for that message. And thank you for being my guest. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> I appreciate you. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.